In this lesson, we will talk about composition in cinematography. What does composition mean? The dictionary defines composition as the way in which something is put together and arranged, or the combination of parts or elements that make up something. These are very broad definitions, but let's put them into an artistic expression. In cinematography, like in any other art form, we're trying to do two things. Focus attention on our subject and create an image that's pleasing to look at. So let's rewrite the two definitions. In the first one, all we need to do is add one word, pleasing, to the definition. The way in which something is put together or arranged in a pleasing way, or more simply, the pleasing selection and arrangement of parts within the picture area. Now let's rewrite the second definition, the combination of parts or elements that make up something. Let's change it to the way parts or elements are arranged to focus on the subject. So why are we talking about composition? Because it's the easiest way to make your films look good and draw attention to the subject in your image. Good composition will also make your images more dynamic and less static, giving the viewer a better experience. Bad composition can create chaos, ruin your shot, and confuse the viewer. Good composition isn't just about the elements in the shot. It's about lighting, color, and shape. In art, there are many rules of composition. Let's focus on the five that I consider most important in cinematography. The rule of thirds. Symmetry. Simplicity. Framing. And leading lines. If you divide the frame into two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, you end up with three rows and three columns. If you align your points of interest along the horizontal or vertical lines, or where the lines intersect, you will end up with a more pleasing and dynamic composition. In this shot from 12 Years a Slave, directed by Steve McQueen, DP Sean Bobbitt plays Lupita Nyong'o's character using the rule of thirds. In this close-up shot of Leonardo DiCaprio from Inception, directed by Christopher Nolan, DP Wally Pfister placed DiCaprio's head dead center on the left vertical line. Symmetry refers to materials being organized in such a way that it conveys a sense of unity through the repetition of objects. In cinematography, it is appropriate to speak of three kinds of symmetry. Axial symmetry, rotational symmetry, translatory symmetry. Axial symmetry is also referred to as mirror symmetry or bilateral symmetry. It is the kind most people think of when you talk about symmetry. Axial symmetry is simply mirroring objects in respect to an axis. Stanley Kubrick loved this type of symmetry. Here is a shot from 2001 Space Odyssey. Notice how the subject is in center and the background is mirrored in the frame. The background elements don't need to be identical and the subject doesn't need to be dead center for this to work. In this shot from 2001, Frank is strapped in his chair and Dave is in the background off center, but the composition still works as a whole. In these two shots from The Shining, you can see Stanley Kubrick's love of symmetry. In this shot from Blade Runner, directed by Ridley Scott, the symmetry is in the balance of subjects on both sides of the axis and not in a mirror image. Rotational symmetry consists of similar equidistant objects relating to a central point. The objects in rotational symmetry often create a visual centrifugal force around a marked or unmarked center. In this example from Blade Runner, the rotational center is unmarked or imaginary. Translatory symmetry is when the same shape repeats itself over and over again, or when visual elements repeat across the location in space. The following are examples from Tombstone, directed by George Cosmatos. Translatory symmetry is fundamentally static, but by varying the concept it can be infused with a certain dynamic quality. The composition in this shot is based on the principle of staggering an object by means of nonlinear displacement, as well as overlapping the subjects. Simplicity is the method of keeping information in the shot relatively simple. If your main subject is close, then your background should be very simple to avoid distractions, like this shot from John Krasinski's A Quiet Place. It's important to keep everything in the frame much less interesting than the subject. This can be accomplished by using a shallow depth of field, like in this shot from director David Slade's 30 Days of Night. Framing is the tactic to use natural surroundings to add more interest to your subject. It can be anything, like bushes, trees, or a doorway. In this shot from Bram Stoker's Dracula by director Francis Ford Coppola, 
Keanu Reeves' character, Jonathan Harker, is framed by the curtains and the light from the window. In this shot from Dead Man Walking by director Tim Robbins, Susan Sarandon and Robert Prosky are framed by the open doorway. In this image from Spike Lee's Malcolm X, KKK writers are framed by the moon on the horizon. Leading lines are lines or elements within an image that lead the viewer's eye to the main focal point. In this shot from Blade Runner, the railing creates a line that leads your eye to Harrison Ford. In this shot from director Danny Boyle's Train Spotting, there are multiple lines leading your eyes to the subjects. These, of course, are just a handful of techniques that cinematographers use to set up their shots. They are meant to be guidelines to help you make good choices. So the next time you set up a shot, think about how the elements in your set or location can work with you for directing the viewer to the focal point.